Now that we have successfully modeled a pirate hat in XSI and seen that it works in XNA, it's time to give our pirate hat some character using textures and shaders. The full version of XSI uses the Mental Ray rendering engine. The majority of materials that you will find in XSI that are available to you are specifically for the Mental Ray rendering engine. Unfortunately, XNA does not support these materials. XNA uses DirectX 9 shaders. Thankfully, the Mod Tool team has provided us with some sample DirectX 9 shaders that we can use on our models. To see these shaders, go to XNA Game Studio, Browse FX Samples. You'll see these files here that are available for you to use. The files ending in FX are the shader files. The other files are supporting files for the shaders. All of these files must be copied into your project directory. To make life easier, I copy them and put them in two different places. If you navigate to your XNA Game Studio project, Guitar Made EPC, I copy them into the content folder, and then under textures, I copy the PNG files that are used for the Fong shader. If you go back out and go into the XSI folder, I also copy all of the files here. The reason this is done is so that XSI knows where to find these files and XNA knows where to find them when it's compile time. To utilize these shaders, in your browser, go to your project directory. It should be set up as a favorite. Go into the content folder and then into the XSI folder and then your project directory for XSI. Here you'll see the FX files that you copied. To apply them to a mesh, simply select the mesh you want to apply them to and drag an FX file to it. I'm going to be using Fong because it's a decent looking default shader. Simply click and drag onto the mesh. You'll see a visible change. This means that the shader was applied successfully. Now before we get too crazy, let's save our pirate hat as a textured version so that we don't lose all of our modeling work. Go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save mine as pirate hat underscore textured. Now we have a clean slate to work with. Close the browser and change from shaded to real-time shaders DirectX 9. You'll notice now that we have a nicely shaded object that is visible in DirectX 9. But the inner mesh that we modeled is not showing up. This is because we haven't applied the material to it yet. Move back to shaded mode and open the materials manager by clicking materials or you can push control 7. Now we see what our shader map looks like. We have three PNG files feeding into the shader. Double click the shader to change its properties. Click the images tab and under ambient map we're going to bring in black.jpg instead of the default ambient occlusion map. Click new, new from file, go to your favorites directory, go into the content folder and textures. Here choose black.jpg. Again, we're not in the XSI project, we're under the XNA Game Studio project. Click OK. And under Texture Space, simply click New to define a new projection. Spherical will be OK for our purposes. Close the shader and close the Material Manager. Now, we notice that we have green lines around our object. These are called texture controls. When you're ready to save your texturing, click the Modeling button under Freeze History. This will clear your projections as well as free up some system resources. When you freeze the entire object, it also freezes all modifications to other properties of the object. So you get a lot of memory back by doing this. It's good practice to do it often. Now let's see if our texture got applied correctly. Change from shaded mode to texture decal. We notice now that it's black, which is exactly what black.jpg is. Let's apply the same texture to the middle mesh. Press spacebar to grab your selection tool and click the middle mesh. Click the materials button to bring up your materials. You'll see that we have our Fong shader and then some scene materials that were brought in from the project when we imported it. Simply drag the Fong shader onto the middle mesh. You notice it changes, but we don't get the texture. That's because we don't have a projection applied to it. To project the texture onto the surface, Push 7 to bring up the render tree. Click on the Fong shader node in the middle. Let's create a new texture projection for the sphere. Click New, Spherical. 
Notice now that we have the green texture controls again. To bake those texture controls, click Modeling. Click the Materials button to bring up your Materials Viewer. Now, there are no check marks on these scene materials. That means that nothing is using them. So we can delete these by pressing the Delete key. Now, we're going to duplicate our black material and bring in our Pirate Hat logo instead. We can rename Fong very easily by right-clicking and choosing Rename, and let's just call it Black. Duplicate the texture by going to Duplicate Material, and rename Black 1 to Skull Crossbones. Let's move the Material Manager so that we can see our model. And we can move into the viewport, press S, and move around to see a little better. Let's go back into shaded mode so we can see what faces we select a little easier. Select the curved part of the pirate hat and go to Raycast Select Polygons. Choose the front six surfaces of this polygon. Now that we have those selected, we can apply our skull crossbones material to just those faces. Close the Material Manager and change to Texture Decal View. This material is still pointing to black.jpg because we duplicated it from black. So push 7 to bring up your render tree. Click the Fong Shader node and notice that we have Skull Crossbones select as our material. Double click the Fong node to bring up the Images tab again. Now we want to bring in piratehat.jpg. Click New, New from File, and go to piratehat.jpg under your Content Textures directory and click OK. We notice now in our decal view that the texture has been applied to those faces. We can create a new texture space if we wish and map it to the UVs. Close the shader properties and the render tree. Now we want to adjust the position of the skull and crossbones. Press Alt 7 to bring up your texture editor. Scale it to make it a little bit more readable. The highlighted area are the UVs that are being projected onto the surface. We can make the shape a little bit more desirable by choosing the Plane button up here and choosing Best Fit. Notice now that the red area maps very closely to the six selected faces. Also, the skull and crossbones appears to be scaled correctly, but we still need to position it in the middle of the pirate hat. So in the Texture Editor, use the same controls that you would while modeling X, C, and V keys, so let's press V to move the projection. My mouse cursor right now is at the center of the pirate hat, which is this vertex right here. So let's drag that vertex to be right in the middle of the nose. There we go. Close the texture editor and freeze history on all of your objects. You can also do this by simply choosing select all and freezing both histories. If you anticipate needing to go back and tweak your modeling or go to a previous step in your modeling or texturing, you might want to wait until later to bake the model. But for now, everything looks good. Let's diagnose our XNA model. This will ensure that it will be fine when it goes into XNA. Choose XNA Game Studio, Diagnose Models. These defaults are fine, click OK, and we get some errors regarding these maps. But that's OK because they are indeed within our XNA project. You can close that, don't save the script file, and just to double check that things look OK, change from Texture Decal to Direct X9 View. And we see now that while our object is very well lit, it does indeed have the correct textures applied. So let's export this into XNA and see if it works. We're going to be exporting to FBX format instead of using the Publish Models command. The reason for this is because XSI will export the materials as custom material effects rather than basic effects. And that will make coding a little bit more difficult for us. So simply go to File, Crosswalk, Export FBX. Choose the directory that you have in your favorites for your XNA project. Go to Content, Models, and save it as pirate hat underscore textured dot FBX. Click OK. These defaults are fine, and we get two warnings about missing texture support. This is because we baked our modeling history, and it will force the textures to be mapped along UVs. That's OK. This warning message is actually harmless. So click OK and save your project. Let's move back over to Guitar Matey PC in Visual Studio. Go to your Models folder and refresh. Ensure that you have Pirate Hat underscore Textured available, included in your project, and ensure that others are not included in your project. That way you won't build more models than you need to. Once it's included, go to the Load Content method and find where you're loading in the model. So ensure that you're loading in the textured model and you don't need to change anything else. At this point, you can do Control-Shift-B to build the project 
and you can see down here, it's building pirate hat underscore texture dot FBX into a format that XNA understands a little bit better, XNB. It built our project just fine, so let's run it by pushing F5. And there we go. We have a fully textured pirate hat, nice and black, with a logo on it. 